Welcome back to Shavers Insider, your entertainment news roundup. So our standout fashion features from last year focus on the industry celebration which was fashion forward. It really proved with both season three and four that it's driving the entire fashion industry in the region forward. Plus, we take a look at one of the biggest social events of the year with fashion on the field. First up, it's the designers that really impressed the fro. Fashion Forward is the fashion platform for Dubai and the Middle East. A fashion movement of outstanding regional designers who are propelling the scene forward in a really progressive way. What do you see happening in the fashion industry here in Dubai? Um, what I think is great about Fashion Forward is that, there, that it's not just about a beautiful presentation and having people to come and see a show. It's really about mixing, the, uh, mixing uh, uh, creativity, showing collections with business. As you, as you might have noticed, there are, there are showrooms here where we are able to show some of our pieces. Um, uh, there is an exhibition. Uh, buyers are invited from different parts uh, of the region and we have some international international press and it's wonderful that press is actually responding to this because we need this we also to have this focus on this area that yes there is creativity also here and there's business here key components include the d3 fashion talks to foster industry discussion and the fashion garden of hip boutiques and accessories and of course, the theatrical catwalk presentations from outstanding established designers such as Ezra, Issa, Amato, Zion the Label and the Empress 1688. The gorgeous Golkar brothers originally created their brand on luxury menswear, but this season it was the women's immaculately tailored trenches, stunning cape jackets and seductive accessories which had the fash pack drooling. Inspired by the relationship of Victoria and Albert, they gave Fall Winter an aristocratic touch. Tell me, what, is, what defines the collection this season? Well, we were looking at the relationship as a starting point between Prince Albert and Queen Victoria and their young relationship they had with each other when they just first met. So as you know, we introduced a lot more women's wear and this was the launch of our women's wear collection. So looking at the dynamics between that couple, we translated it between the dynamics of our men's wear to our women's wear. So we started at that for our inspiration. <laughs> Winter Wonderlands and fairy tales go hand in glove, and Zayan Gandor's latest collection is driven by the renegade princess marching towards her own destiny. Where better to get romantic inspiration than the 1990s classic film Pretty Woman? Zayan, it's wonderful to have you on the show again. Congratulations on the gorgeous collection. I always look forward to your work so much because it's just so fun, it's so flirty, it's so feminine. And this year it was all about Pretty Woman. Right. Why this concept now? Um, I'm in love with the movie. I think every girl, like uh, growing up, we, we loved uh, watching uh, Julia Roberts and you know her outfits and the progression of her outfits. I, I, I always uh, you know, stopped with when she said, I want the fairy tale. I want the fairy tales means a lot of things, differently probably in the movie, but in my collection or really how I interpret it in my life is that you go after what you really want to do. You go after and create your own fairy tale. This is really the message behind all of my collections. It's, the, it's the, uh, the motto that I live by. So, and I always say to girls um, who love fashion, as they always ask, and I definitely encourage them to go after their dreams. More creative and unique Lebanese designs came from Jean-Louis Sabaji. Truly inspired by Mother Nature, JLS transforms his gowns into a magical fusion of flowers and insects. Handcrafted techniques are used to imitate the foliage of a garden, and pastel colours graduate from raspberry to yellow to orange, white and beige. So let's talk about your collection today. It really was like pieces of art. For me it was total Garden of Eden, Titania, Midsummer's Night Dream. How would you describe it? Yeah, actually um, nat nature is mainly my, my inspiration. So whatever I do is like al always is related to nature. In my previous collections, I like I, I used to take like the dark side of nature, like the revenge of nature against humans. I get, yeah, so in this collection, it was different. I wanted to merge all elements of nature together, like making them live 
under one uh, like under one atmosphere so from the smallest insects to the rarest flowers i wanted to show this interaction uh, because i wanted to i wanted to uh, give a message through this collection The season's runway is closed with the outstanding haute couture and Indian-inspired designs from world-renowned Filipino designer Fern Wan. Amato's signature style uses a mix of rich textures and lavish materials with an emphasis on luxurious detailing and embellishment. Uh, Amato is all drama, it's all about theater. I want the the, the the people who watch my who's watching my show to experience the experience is very important for me to to let them know my world to let them feel my world and what is your world because I know I've talked to you before and you've always said that Tim it's Burton all about, it's, in, it's all about India and India is mystery it's enchanting it's uh, it's it's wisdom now I know you've got so many celebrity clientele who are you working with at the moment uh, I don't have the liberty to talk about it because it's like a secret. Yes, hello, Fez. Yes, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> secret or not, Amato does boast a long list of celeb clients, including Heidi Klum, Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj, Shakira, Nicole Scherzinger and Amber Rose. Talking fashion, Dubai World Cup is the biggest event on the global horse racing calendar, but it's also the date on a Dubai socialite's diary. With a total of 27 and a quarter million dollars in prize money, on track there is serious horse racing action, but off track it's all about fashion and style. With the pinnacle of glamour being the fiercely contested Jaguar style stakes, let's meet the trendsetters who are competing for the best dressed titles. The dress is a self design, I've got it tailor made. Uh, the hat is designed by my stylist Lemon Daya. He's one of the ma most amazing stylists I've ever met. My shoes are Jimmy Choo's. It's a Lady Dior handbag and I've got some Chanel pearls. My hat is from Karen Hamilton Millinery. So there's a few of us today wearing her hats and uh, they're brilliant. The coveted breast dress lady title was hotly contested with colour blocking, florals and structure being standout themes. Sarah Jane Hart was awarded the title in a patterned beige dress with a Peter Pan collar and custom-made matching feathered hat. She totally seized the moment and got straight into her Jaguar F-Type convertible. Hi, my name's Sarah and I'm actually wearing um, a Molo dress, which is back home from England. It's a British custom-made dress and um, my artist friend has actually custom-made this hat for me. It's from Debenhams. And the guys were flaunting their fashion credentials too, with sharp suits and trilby hats. It's that one day of the year men can be really playful, creating looks that flaunt character, chivalry and charisma. And the dapper Marlon Weir rocked it in a three-piece suit, top hat and cane. Finalists of the most creative hat or fascinator included bold artistic creations, from huge peacock feathers to top hats to architecturally inspired designs, but the winner went to a fabulous seasonal flower bomb. The fashion face-off was as highly contested as the races themselves, and thank goodness the Jaguar Style Stakes Arena was located in the apron views, so we even got a fleeting glimpse of some equestrian action. That was your annual fashion fix and the biggest designers in the UAE. Next up, stay with us for musical megastars across the Emirates. <laughs>